Hey everyone, welcome to my class. Today we're going to talk about numbers. There are lots of different kinds of numbers. Uh, there's fractions, there's whole numbers, there's negative numbers, there's negative decimals, there's negative fractions, and all of those kind of fall into families. In math we call those sets and subsets. And for pre-AP, we are going to dive into real numbers, which is one step above rational numbers. So you're going to need eh, like five colors. And we're going to start with the little things. And we're going to take up the whole paper, so don't draw big. And we are going to identify, we're going to classify real numbers. Now, I think of this like when you were little, like when you were a little bitty, you were in kindergarten and your teacher put four of those little teddy bear things on your desk and said, hey, count those. How many are there? How did you count them? You would start one, two, three, four, because that's how little kids count. That's how we all count. Nobody starts, um, zero, one, two, three, four. That doesn't make sense. It's not what comes natural. So our natural order of counting is one, two, three, four. So we're going to draw a little fish. And my little fish knows the numbers one, two, three, four, and so on. These are natural numbers. It's how we count naturally. Now let's talk about zero. At some point somebody explained that there was a zero. And we looked at a number line and we saw, oh, okay, so there's zero and then one and then two. When you throw in the idea of zero, we're talking about whole numbers. So draw a little bit bigger fish because there's really not much difference between whole numbers and natural numbers except for zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. And these are called whole numbers. This should be review so far. After whole numbers. We learned, so we've gone one, two, three, four, and then we said, oh, there's zero. Well, there's something besides zero. There's something on the other side of zero, and those are negative numbers. When you were a little bit bigger, somebody explained on the other side of zero, there are negative numbers. So a little bit bigger fish. A little bit bigger. And these guys, we have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And this goes forever this way, and it goes forever this way. And these are called integers. In sixth grade, you covered integers. You dealt with the whole numbers in negative form and you add it and you subtract it and put them on a number line. Well now that we're in seventh grade we're going to get to the bigger fish. In this grade level we deal with the numbers that come between integers. So we're going to deal with negative fractions and we're going to deal with negative decimals and we call those rational numbers. So our seventh grade fish now has negative one half, one third, 1.27, negative 2.43. What's another rational number you can think of? Rational numbers are basically any number that you can put on a number line and say, hey, there's that number. That's a rational number. So my rational numbers still have the other little fish inside of them. We didn't forget what we learned in kindergarten. 
we still remember one, two, three, four. So if I have a number, let's say, I'm gonna use a different color because I don't wanna give it away. If I have the number seven, what kind of number is seven? Which families does seven fit inside? When did you learn the number seven? You were really little. Little kids know the number seven, but the bigger kids still use the number seven. So seven is a natural number. It's a whole number. It's an integer. And it's a rational number. It's all four. Now, a negative number. So let's say negative three. Do little kids know about negative three? Probably not. Do, move this. We learned about negatives when we were in sixth grade, maybe fifth grade. So the integer fish is when we first learned about negatives. So a negative three is an integer and it's also rational because we still use them in seventh grade. But you wouldn't go to kindergarten and try to explain negative three to a five-year-old. They'd get really confused. Now, pre-AP or honors as we call it now, What's the opposite of real? If we have real numbers, well, why do we have to call them real numbers? Is there something that's not real? Yeah, there are numbers that aren't real. We call those imaginary numbers. And just to give you a peek, imaginary numbers, scooch this down. There's an imaginary number the only one I'm going to tell you about just so that you know that it does exist. Squares and square roots. So if you have one times one, it's one. If you have two times two, it's four. The square root of four is two. But can you do the square root of a negative number? Are there any two numbers that you can multiply together that's the same number and end up with a negative. Negative two times negative two is positive four. So the square root of a negative doesn't exist, but you'll use it in math. And we call that I, it's a little squiggly I. You don't need this. It's just a little peek into high school math for you. But what you do need to know there's another fish in this sea that eighth grade needs to know. And since y'all are in honors, y'all need to know. There is a jellyfish swimming out in the sea and we call those irrational. So in seventh grade, we learned rational. In eighth grade, we learn about irrational numbers. I'm gonna draw a little jellyfish. Kind of looks like a little Pac-Man ghost. Irrational numbers, kind of like how jellyfish don't have bones. They're just jelly, it's irrational. Irrational numbers go on forever. They have no ending. They repeat in weird patterns. They're not specific. So numbers that don't have a perfect square. So like 25 has a perfect square, just 24. Are there two numbers that you can multiply together that are the same number that equal 24? No, because five times five is 25. Four times four is 16. So there's not a number that we can multiply by itself and get 24. So it doesn't, it's, it's irrational. It doesn't exist. You can't just put it, you can't say it's a number. Another one that we deal with is pi. Pi goes on forever. It never repeats, it has no pattern. People all over the world spend hours and hours and hours memorizing digits of pi. It never repeats. 
It starts out 3.14, and that's really all you'll ever need. But it keeps going, 3.14159, forever. And nobody can say, there it is. Because you can always get a little bit more specific. So it's irrational. So our goal for this lesson is to be able to find a number and identify its sets and subsets and list them that go with them. So, like a negative three is an integer and it's rational. What about zero? Zero's always the tricky one. Is zero a natural number? No, because we don't start counting and think zero, one, two, three. That's not natural. Zero is a whole number So it's also an integer, so it's also rational. All right, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and ring the bell to get notifications. See you next time.